What's up, y'all, gang? All right, we're here with the physics problem. We got some work things going on, some forces going on, so let's figure it out. So we got these two blocks, right? You can see them somewhere on the screen. Uh, let's draw a force body diagram, because that's how you want to start all these problems, right? So let's draw the force body diagram for A first. So here's A. So we got our forces on it, right? So our force here, this is our force applied, and this is equal to what, like 60 newtons? Yeah. Nice. And then we have a force of tension, right? Force of tension, and that's pulling it backwards, right? The other block is making it trying to resist the, the push of it. So you know you can see that it's just gonna it's gonna be resistant. So and then for block B, I guess we can do that too while we're at it. So all we're gonna have on block B is the force tension pulling it the same. And this is gonna be the same tension force as this one, just you know pulling it forward instead of backwards. So there's no friction, nothing to worry about that. Um, of course, each of these would have a gravitational force and a normal force, but in this system, it's not going to matter, right? Uh, we're not going to need to worry about that kind of thing in this. So, I'm just going to not write it out, but, you know, of course, they are there. So, when are we looking at, uh, we're trying to find, you know, the tension force, right? Uh, we need to find a formula for this, right? So, our formula is some of the forces in the x direction is going to be equal to the mass times the acceleration. Why did I write that so small? I don't know. Mass times the acceleration in the x direction. So, what can we find here? So, we can find the forces, right? We're given force A is 60. And we know the force of tension is what we're trying to find. We have the mass of A, right? Don't we? Uh, yes, we do have the mass of A. And then we need to find the acceleration, right? We need to calculate that. So, we're given that the block moves 18 meters in 5 seconds. So, this is delta T, right? Delta T is 5 seconds. That's how much time changed. And delta X is equal to the 18 meters, that's how much it moves. So our formula for this, so we know that uh, our change in x is equal to one half, one half velocity initial plus velocity final times, uh, times time, right? Yes. This is our formula here. So we're gonna try to find velocity final. Now we can use velocity final to find acceleration. So what do we have? So change in x, we said is 18. So it's one half. Velocity initial, we're starting from rest, so this is zero. So zero plus velocity final is heat, or velocity final is what we're trying to find. And then time is five seconds. So of course we can multiply this by two to get 36 and divide it by five to get velocity final. And this number in a more readable form is 7.2, right? 7.2 meters a second. So we have velocity, but we don't have acceleration. So we know that our acceleration is, uh, or we know that our velocity increases linearly, which means is that our average velocity or ex average acceleration is going to just be equal to our actual acceleration. It's not accelerating at a different rate over time; it's accelerating at a constant rate. So we know that average acceleration or average, which is just going to be equal to our normal, is change in velocity over change in time. So we have change in time and we have change in velocity because we know it starts from zero and it goes to this velocity. That means that our acceleration is going to be 7.2 divided by 5, and this is 1.4 meters a second squared. I know that number out of the back of my head. I know it. I'm joking. Okay, so now we can actually start plugging things into our problem here. A bit of side work. That's actually the hardest part, in my opinion. So we look at this, right? So we have force of A is pushing in the positive direction, and force of tension is pushing against it, right? So this is our some of our forces, right? And then our mass is, what is our mass? It's like 15, right? Uh, probably. Yeah, 15. And then our acceleration is 1.44. So we're trying to find force of tension, so let's go ahead and subtract this over. So we're going to get force of tension is equal to, so we're going to add that negative over, we're going to multiply it. So that's going to be 15 times 1.44, and then we're subtracting this force, or, or force applied, which is 60 newtons. So what you want to do is you want to just plug all that in, and here you get the force of tension is equal to, I think it's going to be a negative number, but we're just looking at the magnitude of it, so 38.4 newtons. That's the force of tension. So that's the magnitude of the force of tension. So that's part A. Now part B is asking what's the, um, what's the mass of B? So we're going to use the same formula, right? But instead of that, we're just going to look at this. So some of the forces in the x direction are equal to mass times acceleration in the x direction. So we know acceleration in the x direction. 
and now we have the force of tension. So looking at our thing here, all it is is force of tension. That's the only force acting on it. Is equal to the mass of B times the acceleration. So then if we're trying to find mass of B, mass of B is just gonna be equal to force of tension divided by acceleration, which is equal to 38.4 divided by 1.44. And then if you get that, you get 26.7 kilograms, which is part B. Yeah, there you go. So that's how you solve part B, solve part A. Uh, that's how you solve this whole problem. So, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. Um, stick around for some more, cal or some more calculus space physics videos. Um, yeah, that's all I got for you guys. So thanks for the support. I'll see you in the next one.